welcome back, it's Christina again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be drawing a Hyrax. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, so here is the Hyrax. Yeah, it doesn't exactly look like an elephant. So, um, we're going to get started. Typically, um, you know, when we do fur, we do it so that it's, it's one stroke, one stroke, and one in between. So we have a couple different, he has also this lighter fur um, up here and then some black around the eyes and the nose, so we'll build all of that in. Uh, and what we're doing in this first step, it's kind of a sketching step, we're just following the contour and the direction that the fur would be going. So as it comes over by the eye, right, we're looping it over um, more towards the nose, we're coming straight up, you know, so on and so forth. But always one stroke in between the others. Starting to loop it off, you can see I'm changing that direction. So over here, it would kind of be coming down. Typically off the nose, it runs into the eye right here before it loops down. So here at this point, it would be going downward. Um, it's coming off. So we'll need to make sure all that's reconciled even with the other colors. And just you know, follow that contour with moderate pin pressure. I'm not putting a ton, not really holding back though. Kind of angles over as it comes up. I um, mean, it's okay, this is a color change. It's okay if it pushes into that color. Um, and their fur isn't really exactly short, so that's okay too. You'll notice usually I sort of radiate from the nose, but because of how his face is and the way I'm drawing, I'm not um, drawing the white yet. Starting at the eye, sometimes that can help because you want this, you want to avoid lie conflicts. So the best way to do that is have the lines from the nose go straight into the eye like this. Um, and then I can make sure that the rest is kind of looped in a way that makes sense. Where, you know, now below the eye it loops down. Um, and so to help avoid that, I'm starting at that eye and sort of working out. And then again, this middle going straight up as I come along the forehead, you know, angling it out, but straight out. And yeah, with the, the color changes, you don't have to worry about, about keeping straight on those. You, they want, they're there, you wanna keep them there. Um, usually you can blend the fur. That does depend on the animal, how harsh a transition is. Um, so that's kind of up to you as to whether you think it would be blended or a harsh sort of cut from one color to another. It tends to look more natural if there's a little bit of overlapping. So I'm not real worried about making sure I don't accidentally breach into the other color I've drawn. Um, it's more important on the edges, but even then, right, that they have fur, so it's not completely unheard of that their fur wouldn't um, go up or down at different points along the head or the edges of the face. And with their fur being a little longer, my strokes can be a little longer. And it's not super long, but it's not, I wouldn't describe it as necessarily very short either. So this just helps me sort out the direction everything should be going. And it's important through here because all of this light colored fur will need to match with whatever I do on the opposite side of it. So making sure that I'm, I'm being consistent with my angles. Um, and then on the back side of the eye, the eye is kind of like a um, bulge, right? It's a, it's a circular it's a it's a like a circle a sphere in our heads that sits in a um, circular recess basically a ball in our faces and so bearing that in mind you have kind of a loop up and then a loop back down as we get that contour and sort of coming off straight on this other side so bring that first straight out. This is the darker fur. Um, the lighter is underneath, when typical on an animal. And then as it comes down, typically the hair on the noses, um, by the nose, and eyes, particularly by the nose, it starts lengthening out a little bit by the eyes, but um, it'll still be typically short by the eyes. 
uh, but that hair tends to be the shortest. Um, and then it lengthens as it comes off, especially if it's a long-haired animal, right? You'll see it lengthen out, but not usually by the nose. It's not always true. Um, and I try to be mindful of that as I'm doing research, because I always do research on an animal before I draw it, that um, I'm mindful of any changes that might be outside of the ordinary. I've certainly seen rare cases where a long-haired animal has long hair by their nose, but it is rare. Usually, even a long-haired animal will have short hair by their nose and eyes, uh, and it lengthens out as it comes down elsewhere. So, you know, as we bring it down the face, all of that's to say that as I bring it down the face, right, I'm lengthening this out because now it would be a bit longer, it's a little bit scragglier, um, and just sort of increasing that length. And then we have the ears to do as well before we uh, switch colors. See how it goes, they have, they're interesting, <laughs> interesting animals. Okay, so we also wanna get behind the ear, we have this kind of fluff coming behind the ear a little bit coming in front. Same thing over here. We have this fluff. And then we have this gray of the ear. Now, um, hair on the ears also tends to be short. Again, that's not always the case. Um, it's more true that an animal with long hair will have short hair by the nose than it is true that they will have short hair on their ears. But um, that doesn't necessarily mean that um, it's not uncommon to see short hair on their ears. So usually when I'm doing this, and you kind of already saw me do it, right, is I, I get to the middle of the ear and I have this point coming straight out. This is to avoid line conflicts. It's very easy to get trapped in some line conflicts doing this, and you'll see it when you do uh, highlights and shadows. There's ways to hide it if you've messed up, but it's just easier to avoid it altogether. So to do that, I have to reconcile the direction change um, and to do that, I just have it come straight up at one point and then problem is solved. And then just bring it back down on the other side. So there's definitely a lot of like little tips and ways to avoid creating problems, certainly things that I've learned over time drawing in this style. Um, not the end of the world when you do, sometimes you can still hide it in highlights. On a shadowed side, it can be a lot harder um, because you're dealing with less strokes already, and now you have a line conflict to sort of contend with, um, and so that can be harder. That you know, hopefully people don't notice, but typically, you know, as an artist, if you can notice something, so can someone else. So right to reconcile that, right? I'm going to bring this straight in. And then on one side, I'm going to loop it one way. And that'll take care of any of these conflicts it might have had. And on the other side, I'm going to loop it the other way. Take care of those same conflicts. It's also why I go straight up the middle. I mean, that is how their hair goes, but go straight up the middle from the nose. Nine times out of ten. Occasionally that won't be true when you're dealing with like horses or donkeys or those sorts of animals. Sometimes they have this weird little like, I don't know what to describe it, circular point where the hair um, in the middle of the nose kind of fans out, I, I guess. I don't know what else to call that. Um, and it'll kind of meet here and then fan out from this center point. So um, sometimes that happens. Okay, so now this lighter color. Right, up here pretty straightforward. We're just going to follow the length and direction we've already done. So loop over the eye, so mimicking that too, before straightening that out of the forehead. Right, so we have that. And still trying to put it in between the other strokes. Having trouble getting that angle. Keep flattening out my, my stroke. Right, and then over here, same thing. And then we have um, 
buffer underneath. Right, still need to match what we've already done before we loop it down. And we have <laughs> we have interesting faces. So typically on a nose you want to come straight off of it. Makes it a lot easier. And then they have some darker, I don't know if it's gray or black. So I haven't decided fully yet if I'm gonna do that in the gray or the black. It'd probably be better. Honestly, it'd be better to do in gray. Be easier than to draw in the black with it. Oh, and then the white teeth. I forgot about that. They also have little teeth that sometimes you can see poking through. And I have on this guy. So again, I can extend that stroke out. Do the same thing on this side. Hold this kind of looping down and then extend it out as it's in the edge of the mouth. Matching up with the gray. Some of this is underneath his chin a bit. Um, as opposed to on his face, it's starting to dip into his neck just a smidge. Because his chin is really here but it can be hard to see because of how their, their faces are. Um, again, it doesn't really matter how long my strokes go past, well, I mean, it matters a little bit, how long my strokes go past the uh, edge of the, the drawing. I don't want it going way past, but. So chin, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come straight down that middle And then after I get that middle established, I'm going to loop it one side or another. That'll help define that spot, especially because um, it's going to be hard to see, given the nature of how his, his uh, face works. They're a little bit, <laughs> a little bit derpy. And you can see I'm changing the direction of my strokes. I'll do that when I'm indicating that there's an elevation change or a contour change or something like that. Because we pick that up. We'll see that. Um, and so that's just one way that I'll do it. And then when we add highlights and shadows, that's really where the magic really comes into play. So that's where it would really be noticeable. Let's see if I pop this off, you can clearly see he's got a little chin there. Okay, and then he's got some white in the ears as well. Kind of like the fluff you see in some animals. Gonna do this the same way though, have that hair coming straight down here, following the contours kind of over from the other side. And then, same thing. And sometimes this ear fluff is longer, right? You have this really long fluff coming in, coming into play. Depends on the animal and exactly what it's doing. Ears are definitely radically different. So again, I take that off, and that's what we're left with. And then we have the actual black which is, you know, because we draw on black, it's gray. And this is light pin pressure as I bring this around. Nothing too heavy. Being careful around the eyes. Eyes are important. Um, it's the first thing that we look at are the eyes. So it's important that we make sure that this is a clean line more than almost anywhere else with some exceptions depending on the animal, but in this case, having the clean eye by the having the clean line by the eye will be more important. So I don't want any variations like this, right? Like I want this to be smooth. Same thing on this side. I'm just following that around in a circle. It's just uh, I think it's skin. You know, we see it on animals where their skin will be right by their eyes and the fur kind of comes off of it. I think that's what this is. 
And then I was taking that sketcher layer off because I need to see exactly what I'm doing. Right, okay, hold on. And then his nose. Right, you have the nostril down here. And then this kind of section where it goes underneath. Follows that down again, same with my idea. I'm not putting a ton of pin pressure. The noses have like a little weird dip here. See how that goes. And I'm bringing this up over here. And I guess we'll do this in black. You know what, we're gonna do it in the gray. I don't know, it's not a big difference. Mm. Yeah, we'll do it in the gray. I'm gonna put light pin pressure in case I change my mind since I'm so torn on this. Right, and the fur not coming to the edge here isn't, again, it's not, not horrible because it's, it is fur coming down. And then we have, you know, bottom lip where that's kicking in and the teeth will be coming off. And then the teeth will be white, which I always choose this off white. Mm. <laughs> the hair can come down, but the teeth can't really come up over the lip. That would be incorrect. But coming off kind of that end, going back into the mouth, Let's see what we got. Look at him. He's adorable. Okay. Now, we're going to start with the um, kind of brownish gray fur. And I'm going to go ahead and take that off. All right, so the light source is going to come from above and to the right. So up here, coming in. Um, like always, that means above and in front of, right? It's it's coming in here, and that should give a good illumination. All edges will be in shadow, um, but you know, obviously, this backside will have more shadow, um, and then I'll have a little bit of highlight on the cheek, a little bit on the chin, but some of this will be in shadow. As the light source comes in, you have sort of an angle coming down this way, so it gives the best chance for your subject to be in highlight. If you do it from behind, you're going to have basically a silhouette around him, um, where anywhere that comes up would be catching the light, but that's it. So it'll leave him in shadow, and if you're coming from one side or another, you have kind of this extreme highlight um, that then goes into extreme shadow. Uh, so it's also not the best to illuminate your subject. So I always think about how my subject will look and what effect I'm going for um, when I'm adding in highlights. Now. All edges are in shadow because, right, the figure is rounding, right? We have this point where it's going behind himself. It's rounding away from the light source. And so even the edge on the side of the light source, unless it's coming directly in, will be in shadow. That'll add to how real he looks. Um, and then otherwise, you know, anywhere where it's highlight, it's just full pin pressure. And just building that up following the lines we've already done, because we've already sorted this out um, in the previous step. You know, we've already worked out that this is how these lines will be going. And really kind of build that up. And again, on these edges where one color meets another, not the end of the world if you don't quite stick to it. I am going to put a little bit of shadowing though over here by his eye, where this eye is dipping down before going back into this full pin pressure of a highlight. Because again, our, our eyes are a you know circular ball sitting in a, or eyes are a ball sitting in a circular recess in our heads. So. And then, yeah, we'll just build up from there. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put the shadows in, so that'll help me kind of sort out what's what, right? So, um, 
Since all edges are in shadow, when we come to the opposite side of this little burst, we have basically an edge before it gets to the ear. So we would potentially have a little shadow in here. Don't always hold true to that because it can run into the ear, but I'll usually put it in. And this is just not uh, um, light pin pressure, not putting a ton of pressure here. Um, and to lower it even more, I can lessen how many lines I put because both will have the same effect. Now that may not hold because of the nature of how, you know, the hair and the ear kind of interacting. Sometimes you wouldn't necessarily see the gap before the ears kicking in, but sometimes the ears a little bit further back on their heads. Sometimes it doesn't look right if I do that. So um, bearing in mind, that's a little bit more flexible, but definitely here on the head, this would be a shadow because it's an edge. Now he is rounding away definitively. And then we'll build the highlight in, you know, to sort of mimic this. So as we're coming off of like an edge like this, right, you don't want a harsh line. Like I don't want this to be shadow and this to be highlight, right? Because that'll look like it's out of place. Um, so when we're doing that, what I'll typically do is either come off of it and put extra pin pressure as I'm coming away or brighten up the area that's shadowed in order to blend it better. Because we don't, you know, if I just put full pin pressure here, you know, there's no doubt that there's this clear line and I don't want that to happen. Um, so I'm gonna be careful on how I'm mixing this edge in. I'll often call it giving myself a runway, at least on the backside when I do have room don't have a typically a lot of room when I'm dealing with like an edge, but you can do some things and this is one of them, right? Slowly brighten it up as I pull it off um, and then, you know, go back to full pin pressure once we're fully away from it. Um, although again, sometimes I do it slightly differently in that instead I'll, I'll brighten up the area I've run it into. It's just, uh, you know, you want a nice smooth transition. You don't want to look at it and go, oh right, like this line on this side of the line is shadow and on this side of the line is highlight. That's what you want to avoid uh, as much as possible. And so it's just a matter of like getting this in here smoothly. But sometimes, you know, as I've already kind of started um, I will uh, put all the shadows in first. It's it's less confusing on the side with the highlight because that's easy. It's just you're following, you know, this line. Um, on this side, it'll be a little bit more prevalent, right? So over here, all of this would be in shadow. So again, that's just that backed off pin pressure. Um, very light strokes and off from the side of the eye because you have that contour of the face now rounding away from the light source. And what I'll do essentially is give myself a runway in order to add the highlights back in because as we come up at the forehead, we'll have some highlights coming back into this. Um, and that transition will happen, right? We have this bulge happening here. So that transition will kind of be coming up a highlight through here. Um, and so making sure I'm sort of indicating that uh, in a way that makes sense is important. Uh, the forehead, the reason, so the forehead, you know, there's less um, to block the light on the forehead. It's also closer to the light source. That's why it ends up being more in highlight. Um, and then I will typically add a little bit of highlight down here, but what I'm going to do and what I always do first is do this backside in shadow so that I can sort out where that highlight's going to go. And it's going to be just under um, the eye, but uh, I like having the control of adding in the shadows first and then sort of worrying about the highlight after. Makes it a little easier to determine um, exactly how much highlight to put under the eye before it looks wrong. Whereas if I put full pin pressure, you know, right off the bat, I don't always get it right. And then it's a lot easier. So it's a lot easier to 
um, add highlight in then take highlight away with this style um, especially because you know if, if I'm having this printed up on like art or shirt or something else I don't want partial opacity so um, I can't just erase something away I have to select it out which inevitably creates a harsh line so I'll have the shadow coming all the way up to here because this is me creating a runway there's going to be a transition point that happens at some point here in between shadow and highlight from where the nose is um, to the eye, probably in here because it'll be highlight all the way over to the eye itself. It's usually how, how they are and their eyes are, I think are a little bit more forward facing. So this is the runway I mean, because the, the shadow probably is really kicking in somewhere around here, but I've included a shadow all through here. That'll allow me to push highlight all the way to the edge, right? So I can push this highlight all the way over without necessarily worrying about what I was talking about earlier when I bring it up to this edge and I have to taper that off because I've built in um, sort of a, a runway for me to do that. Right, so now here I can sort of taper this in. Now when I'm doing this in a section that has uh, that I've already shadowed, it's just a matter of adding more lines. I'm not adding more pin pressure. I don't need to. Adding more lines is the same thing that, add, that adding more pin pressure does, is it brightens it up. I just need to make sure it's brightened up enough that it looks natural, like a natural transition. Right? So we just sort of add more lines, and you can see that's already tapering that in on that area that's that I've sort of deemed as a runway. Um, and yeah, makes it relatively easy to do um, if you give yourself enough space to do it. It's a little harder when you have less space, like up in here. Um, it's just sort of less space that I'm working with. Um, so it makes that a little trickier to get, uh, get right without brightening up too much but you know he's a pretty cute fella all right I'm gonna finish up um, this color I'm just gonna follow the lines that are already there and I will be right back All right, so now we're gonna switch to this lighter color. The ears still have the dark as well, so we're not done with it, but um, first thing we're gonna do is the section above the eyes. That should be relatively easy. Ah, uh, and both exception of maybe a little bit on this one both should should be in highlight right so we're just following these same lines full pin pressure I got a little overzealous with the other color so I pushed in um, I pushed in on this side and so I opted to match it on the other it's fine because we're putting a lighter color on top which is usually you know when it's above the eyes like this it's usually uh, a lighter color on top it's not usually a dark spot although sometimes it can be and we can brighten this up even more by adding more lines just like less lines darken something more lines will brighten it up if I need to especially in areas where now there's a big overlap. Right, so that's what that looks like. It actually blends nicely. That's how you can kind of blend it by pushing in more, although that wasn't intentional. And I'm probably going to take the white and push it into the grayish brown a little bit. But for now, we're just getting this filled in. 
And then we have, of course, the cheeks and the chin and a little bit of the neck um, to do. Okay, so as we start coming over here, this is still highlight, right? We still kind of have that as a highlight. But it's transitioning, transitioning very quickly into shadow from here, so I need to be careful. And here is where that overlap is happening. Okay, just like on the other side, I can brighten it up by adding more lines. Yeah, okay, so... I'm going to very lightly, and this doesn't take a lot of pin pressure, very lightly push the white out just a little bit. Soften up these edges just a little. Make it look like it's blending a little bit more naturally. And the same thing on this side. Again, just very light pin pressure. I don't want to put a lot because that might be too much too quickly. Just doing it this way can give me a little bit more control over how much I'm adding and where I'm adding it. So you don't want it to be too jarring what we're doing. All right. Now we have down in here. So there's going to be some shadowing under the chin. Um and of course on this back side. So I'm going to go ahead and do a line of shadow over here um, on this whole side, but the cheek will be catching some light. So um, this isn't going to fully be true, but it is a little bit. I'm actually going to need this just a little bit. And it's okay to come down past the mouth with the hair on the, on the, upper side because it's it's hair just like on the edge again it's short hair typically by the noses and the mouths but um, it's still hair so it's okay if some of it comes a little off likewise on this side right this is also an edge so this will be a little bit in shadow and then of course we we run off that edge and then of course down in here will be a bit in shadow because it's you know all the edges are in shadow and then it's going down into the neck so some of this might be highlights sometimes however I do find it easier to fade something off by not putting it in highlight leaving it in shadow and then to indicate the dip of the chin this will also be in shadow but only on the, along the bottom. Uh, yeah, maybe along the top where the mouth is also hitting, but only along the bottom until it connects back into the rest of the face. Right, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Making sure that highlight and shadow run into each other nicely. So I'm going to see how this looks by filling in this side real fast. Again, being careful to blend it, right? You can see I'm tapering off as I get close to that edge. So I don't want um, something to be out of place here and it to look too jarring as it comes down. So tapering off that pin pressure and then building it up to match nicely. And as we kind of come over here, this would be full pin pressure all the way down. Let's see how that does. Since it's not rounding around like usual, just not quite sure how it's going to look. And I want to make sure it's going to look okay. I'm going to have a little gap by the mouth. All of this would still be highlight except potentially right up in here. Where there's probably just a little bit of overhang. So if we take that off. And now it seems to be working. Bring this all the way. 
all the way under. So, okay, you can see I didn't blend this nicely, so I'm gonna come back in here, make sure that's got a good blend to it, but I need to also be very clear that this is a separate level, right? Like you have a shadow. That's what's gonna make all of this work, is if the shadow is right or not. Okay, for now it seems to be. Um, and of course, as we come under the chin, some of this will be in shadow too. So, let's see here. Some of this will be in shadow as it connects in. We actually do have a little bit of a dip here, where potentially some shadow would be kicking in too. Play that by ear. And you have highlight. And this highlight up here is running into another color, but down here it is running into its its own color. So once again, making sure this fades nicely, because not not every place under the chin is going to have a shadow. I need to sort out where that's going to transition. But right, all of this, all the way to the middle of the chin, definitively highlight, and then. it starts tapering over once we go through that middle section and it'll start backing off on the pin pressure over here. Now, to do the shadow underneath, you know, we have to consider the direction of the light source. The light source is coming in from this way, which means the shadow underneath the chin would be this way. So, that means this is shadow, and it probably won't be all that far, right? I drew it all the way down, but the chin isn't that thick out, so you're going to have highlight kind of around it, right? You're going to have highlight all through here. taper it off again as we come to the edge. So we should see that with just shadows and highlights. Let's finish getting this chin in place. Start transitioning to shadow as we bring this the rest of the way over. And then all the way underneath we'll still have shadow even if it doesn't go down too much, right? And then tapering that off just like we did with the other, getting this nice loose brush strokes. But we can push some to the edge, that should be fine. If we need to um, lessen how much the shadow is, we can certainly do that. I'm actually gonna give so that chin, I'm going to add more lines, right? I've already done the, the shadowing, so now I can just add more lines to create just a little bit of a highlight as we bring the chin over. It's tapered off still, but not quite as dramatically as I had it. Filling in some of these gaps, especially because the chin's pushing more forward than some other parts of his face, so we're going to want that to really stand out. I'm going to do the rest of the side, and then we'll flip to the other um, I'm going to do all of this in shadow at first. Yeah, and then sort out the highlights from there. That'll be the easiest thing to do. Um, down here, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this line on this side in shadow. And then I'll fill in the rest of this side in highlight and then flip to shadow on the other side. So. I'm going to do that real fast, and I will be right back. Okay, so now 
it's shadowed, we need to sort of taper in the connection over. But first, there is going to be some highlighting on this cheek, right? It's, it's because the nose typically isn't quite big enough to stop a highlight from coming through. Again, putting more lines, not pin pressure. Um, and it'll brighten this up nicely because this will be more forward than the rest of it, right? Like it dips back. So this will have some highlight, not a ton, but we are going to bring this all the way up around his mouth and blend this in to up here. So we want this also blending down, right? We had some highlight coming up here. So this will give us a chance to blend this down too. That nose was coming over. Okay. And blend it in just a little bit more. I feel like there's right now a harsh, harsher delineation than I would want. All right, come back up in here and bring that up just a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to pull this over, this highlight which, you know, doing the same thing that we did up on the cheek, just more lines, sort of uh, slowly tapering this off. Hey, so, <laughs> it's kind of cute. In an interesting way. Okay. So. I feel like here it's a little awkward, so I'm just going to very carefully fix that. It's where I had some overlapping lines, and it's turned out a little bit darker than it should be. Also going to brighten up right under the chin just a little bit. I feel like that's too deep of a shadow of what's happening. Also need to make sure that this highlight's clear <laughs> since I did all of that. Again, just tapering this a bit. His chin isn't that much of a big delineation. Their chins are kind of not a very um, big, rounded chin. <laughs> They're a little bit more flattish to the face. So making sure there's some balance here. It's there, like you can see it, but it's a lot harder and see that that blends a lot more nicely. I don't want to be too much though. That's probably it's probably better. Making sure this middle is the most filled out. Okay, okay. Now I'm going back to this darker color because I <laughs> talked about brightening up under the eye, but I didn't actually do it. So I'm just going to come back down here. Give it a little burst. Oh, and I'm going to take off the sketch. Is that thing big? Sometimes I do. They're really forward facing, I do. In this case, their eyes aren't really that forward facing. I'm just doing this because the way we look at eyes, we'll see a delineation. So it'll help. It'll help us look at that and go, all oh, right, like, you know, that's an eye. It adds some extra interest on this side of the face. Um, right, now I'm going to come in here and uh, do this. I'm going to do it all in shadow, so I'm still debating about if it should be in the gray or the um, grayish brown. I feel like the grayish brown would make sense. And then, of course, we have the teeth, <laughs> which I think are really cute. Yeah, we'll stick to the, we'll stick to the brown. We'll do this in brown. And we'll highlight it in brown too. That'll be a little easier. Even though I'm doing the whole thing in shadow right now. All right, and then down in here. Uh, some of this 
will be highlight and some of it will be shadow on the bottom. So we'll add highlight in. Right, just kind of sticking to the upper section, not putting a lot of pin pressure. This helps blend it. And then fading out as the mouth sort of rounds into itself. And then on the opposite side, where the mouth is rounding back out, it would catch some highlight. And then underneath, have some highlighting pushing up to match what we've done with the bottom. Which that shows up nicely. Okay. I'm gonna do the teeth real fast. Won't need much. Um, they're small, so I am gonna shadow again both of these, and then add a nice burst of white onto them. Both of them will be catching the light, um, and we'll want them to. Right, that's important in the composition is having their teeth coming out. I mean, it's, you know, you could do without it because there are some pictures where you don't see their teeth coming out, but I thought it was cute when they did have their little teeth poking out, so. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of a burst and then a little bit of a burst, leaving the edges in shadow and the tip. And the tops, because honestly, the teeth, I mean, the upper lip's probably casting a little bit of a shadow. Doesn't have to be a clean edge, though, as weird as that sounds, because you have fur that would be pushing down. So it being a little more jagged, the highlights is fine. <laughs> and then evening them out a little bit more than what I've done. Not horrible, but give a little bit more oomph to this guy over here. Okay. And now um, we have the ears. And then um, we'll do the black, the nose, and the eyes. And they're um, much like a lot of rodents, rodent-like animals. Uh, it's hard to see their eyes, so I'm probably, we're just gonna likely do a light flare on their eyes, which will be nice and, and quick here. So, just like I did with the others, I'm gonna do, um, both ears in shadow first, and then we'll add the highlight in. So I will be right back. And like always, right as I'm doing this, I'm just following the contour of the lines I've already drawn. I'm just sort of filling it in with very light pin pressure. So I will be right back. Now to add some highlights. It's just a matter of thinking about where the light source is and how the ear is bending. This is different for every animal and it's going into a recess. Right, so tip would have it. Maybe not a lot over here except right on this edge. Until you get underneath you probably have the ear picking up just a little bit more and underneath would lose the highlight. Okay, and then over here you have, you know, the back side picking up highlight because that's the direction the light source is coming in on. You have kind of this interior that also is probably picking up just a little light right in here instead of the tip. And then you have this side of the ear, this inner side, once again, picking up highlight, potentially just a little bit, probably not all the way to there. 
depends on how far down the ear comes, how far down that highlight would go. The body inevitably would start blocking that, right? Make sure that's clear enough. You can see it, but not jagged. Okay. Now we have this lighter fluff in the ears. That kind of leads into the black abyss. So this is a little bit looser, longer, fluffier. This is the inner fluff you sometimes see with animals. So this will have some highlighting too. That was a little much though. Okay, and then giving it just this little bit of highlight. hair coming up so this doesn't actually matter where the edges are because it's going into and out of the ear just a little bit okay and then the same thing on this side I'm gonna do this light pin pressure and then we'll fill in the highlights once we have it all kind of situated okay so now uh, the highlighting would be more towards the right. It's a little bit more sporadic. Sometimes it'll come up though. Okay. All right. Now we have the black, which really isn't that much off from this. Uh, grayish brown to get the nose and the um, eyes. So uh, I'm going to do all of this in shadow because it's black and drawing black on black is a tricky thing to do. And so whenever, and I should say I'm actually using gray, whenever I'm drawing black I use gray which means it's tricky because if I put too much pin pressure or add too many lines in, it'll look gray instead of black. Um, so I am, I, I always very lightly do the pin pressure when I'm doing that and then sort out the highlights kind of after because I will try to give it a little bit of highlighting. But um, again, right, like I have to be careful. It also is sometimes a case where um, one of the rare cases where I pop off the sketch layer to get rid of how many lines because it matters, um, you know, when you're highlighting something and usually it doesn't matter, but when you're using this technique and uh, drawing in gray on black to look black, it does matter. <laughs> Don't always erase it. But if this turns out too bright because I, I um, did too much, then I will. Okay, so that's the eyes. Um, so let's go ahead and do this just a little bit. So I'm going to have just a little bit of highlighting up on this right side and on the top. Not much. Again, it's not full pin pressure. As we come down this other side, switching that to be against the eye, where the light source would be kicking in, picking up just that little bit. Right, and so then we get just that little bit of detail. It's not much, but um, it definitely adds. And then basically, right, the same thing on this side. You do that just a little bit on the right. Light source is from the right, so. On the right side of that eye, you have just that little bit of burst, and then on top, because it's above as well, and as we circle over this way, we move that to be against the eye. Because um, it'll look like, you know, it's, it's, again, it's that circular recess in our heads, right? As it's coming out, light source is catching that um, to create that effect.
Okay. And then the nose. I'm going to lightly fill in the nose as well, and then come back to do the highlights, so I will be right back. All right. Now, I'm going to have a little bit of highlight over here. And then on top of the nose, go here. So just that extra pin pressure. Oh, I'm sorry, more lines. A little extra pin pressure, but mostly just more lines. And then tapering that out as we come over. And then underneath here, this would have it. Just that little bit. And he has the dip right there. This side picks that back up. Creating that. It's too much. <laughs> Creating that like we did the other. Yeah. All right. Now for the eyes. So, whenever I'm doing eyes with just a light flare, I do a kind of a teardrop shape, but following the fact that the eye is rounded, right? So we have kind of this shape there. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. And then, so I'm using uh, the lasso tool, right? I'm going to come up here to edit. I'm going to fill it with the foreground color. Select, deselect. And then we can adjust as needed using the nudge tool. I think that's good or not. I'm actually going to change the angle just a little. Using free transform, not much, just. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then what we're going to do on this side is we're going to take the lasso tool again. We're going to mimic hair kind of coming in front of it, right? So you have, you know, just some fur coming in front of that. And then we're going to erase that out. So it'll be like some fur is blocking the way that light's coming in. Let's see what that does. We can also extend this down. You can push this as deep as you want does work nicely. Right, because as I pull back, you see that and that looks some um, it looks like something's blocking it. So I only do this on the left because the right it won't have anything to block it. So on the left is where you're going to have that opportunity to push fur in to make it look like um, the light is being blocked. But yeah, there we go. All right, that's how you draw a Hyrax. I hope that's helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.